Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gerard the Dinosaur. I am your host, John, and today we have Matthew Martinson, a sound designer for Clay Entertainment, among other things. He is going to describe to us in general and in specific what he does. Thank you, Matthew, for being with us today. Uh, happy to be here. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us what you do, what your general job consists of. And we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty a little later. Just tell us kind of what a sound designer is. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a sound designer um, at Clay Entertainment. Uh, I make sounds for our various video games. Um, I'm thankful enough to now be working on a team with a bunch of other really talented people who make sounds. Um, and in the game sense, it, it stretches out from just designing sounds to implementing the sounds, uh, getting the sounds into the games in various ways. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it at its most simplistic. No, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, this is a topic I'm really interested in because this is actually, um, my major. <clears throat> I'm music tech yep. at school. <laughs> so, um, I feel like of all the, the, uh, interviews I've done so far, this is the one I feel I have the most knowledge of i don't want to say i have a lot of knowledge because i obviously don't because i'm still at school but um this is the one i'm really excited to learn about because awesome. I, I have like little bits of knowledge like i know a little bit about like f mod i know a little bit about this and a little bit about that but yeah it's this is like kind of what i want to do so i'm really excited to hear <laughs> what you have to say so <laughs> no pressure <laughs> um so i guess from there uh if you don't mind just kind of yep. tell us about you, tell us where you started, tell us how you got here, and then tell um, us everything in between. This is, yeah, sure. This is something that came up on, on Twitter, actually, lately, with the whole my first game job, I think was the hashtag, of people just sharing their stories of, of where they came from. And, I mean, I've got this thing where I think those of us who, like, I've been doing this a really long time. I've been, my first game was in, I started working in 2003. So I've been at it. I've been at it a while, and I feel like the people that have been doing it as long as I have, like how we got into the industry is just like it's interesting as a historical fact, but it's like not really relevant anymore because the the industry has changed so much yeah. that most of the time people are asking that question. They're 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 looking for a for some information they can use on their way into the industry. And it's just, it's so different now that like how I got in, you, you can't do that anymore. That guy would not get a job at all. So wow. I started, I went to, went to school back, uh, in, I started recording school in 97. Uh, or did I finish school in that? No, I finished school in 97. <laughs> Um, and I went to record bands and I worked on, on music projects and music for film and television. Um, I did that for about five years, I think it was, uh, and was having a heck of a time making any money based off of bands who are a whole group of people who have no money. Um, so I took a summer job doing video game testing. And while I was there, I found somebody I had gone to recording school with was doing sounds for video games and kind of realized that that was a thing that could be could be done and there was a company behind it who actually paid people to do it so this was a much more stable job um and so i transitioned out from just doing testing as like a temporary summer gig into moving into doing sound for games and, oh. and kind of just never looked back but like i showed up uh you know i got a, a friend got me an interview as my qa contract was expiring and i showed up with a cd of bands I had recorded like that was my demo. I had no demo reel. I had like, but nobody did that back, back then. There was no way to, to make these sort of things. So like that, that kid wouldn't get his foot in the door at all yeah. today. Like you, the bar has been raised so much higher than when I started out. Like it's a real, it's a real challenge now. Like you really got to be on point and like know a lot. Like, that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow to listen to. <laughs> um, no, it's, um, yeah, no, I do agree with what you say, though. I actually, on a kind of related note, I'm taking a, uh, an animated film class right now, and part of the section was we talked about uh, Machinima, which is that mm -hmm. period in video game history when yeah. um, they actually made uh, video games in, um, and not video games, they made animated films 
in like the video game. Yeah. And just like in that like 10 year span that the video game industry just kind of like exploded this, the entire machinima industry just kind of came and then kind of disappeared and mm-hmm. it's probably kind of like the same way, just the, ki- the entire sound design and probably the other animation and other types of industries too, just kind of completely changed. Yeah. And, um, when, uh, when I started out there, you couldn't go to school for sound design. Um, uh, there might've been a few, but it was incredibly rare. You went to like recording school and, and then sound design became something you could go to school for. And then game audio became something you but could go to school for. But that, well, that, uh, back then, that wasn't a thing. That wasn't like we were all just sort of coming in and figuring out. It. it was all these people coming from film and TV and music and just, you know, none of us knew what we were doing. You know, now you can specifically go to school and somebody's going to tell you exactly what's going on and how to do stuff and you know you can download middleware now and play with it and try it out yourself like none of that existed back then there wasn't there was only proprietary tools and nothing you could get your hands on to try out you know and now you can download all these DAWs and you can do everything in your computer you know so you've got these like amazing set of tools at at your fingertips now and just when I started out that none of that was there so back then when after the QA position, where did you end up going then? Um, that was still at I, I did a QA spot at Electronic Arts and then got an audio spot with them. Okay. Uh, and um, I can't I can't remember how long I was there with four or five years. Um, I bounced through a bunch of contracts and then got a got a full time position for a while. At did a EA? bunch of games. Yeah. Okay. Did a bunch of games. Then went freelance for a while, uh, and then uh, through connections from freelance landed at clay and that's uh that's the uh the really exciting part for me because i'm a big <laughs> fan uh, of clay stuff that um and how how is that how is the uh working for clay it's amazing it's uh, i would argue it's one of the best companies to work for in the industry um it's amazing yeah the games we work on are are great uh the people that lead the company actually care about us um and care about our us as people it's just amazing like i've i've never had a boss who's cared about me more than than my boss at clay has oh that's really great you know so yeah we're we're actually humans we're not just cogs in the wheel um i I would have a hard time going and working anywhere else at this point um were you uh on i imagine you were i don't know the i didn't look up the main timeline but were you on like the one of the main developers or main sound designers for Don't Starve? Uh, yeah, I started... Uh, the first things I did uh, did at Clay was uh, I finished up Shank 2 and did Mark of the Ninja. And okay. Then I, I was the first in-house sound designer that they hired. Um, and Look since then, now there is six of us. Um, the company has just grown and grown and grown as I've been there. It's been amazing. It's been really, really fun to... to get bigger and you know we've got a bunch of projects on the go so it's kind of like every project gets a sound designer um so i did i did the first don't starve i did a whole bunch of that and then i had a little bit of help from some contractors and then uh it kept going and we kept doing more games so we turned one of those contractors into a full-time person um and now he's taken over so i still do a little bit every now and then but it's mostly danny's show he's he's the one running the sound on on don't okay. start these days and he's killing it still <laughs> still sounding oh great. it's it's still great it's still yeah. a every time it's still fun to go in so you guys are doing great work on it <laughs> thank um, you and i imagine are you i imagine it's fun working there or at least um you enjoy what you do in some capacity yeah i mean i i love making sounds so um one of the like i went into recording because uh, I didn't have the dedication to be a professional musician, but I loved being around music and I loved techie stuff. So being on the other side of the glass was a, like a really fun, like it's a super technical thing, but you get to be creative. Um, and I loved that. And then getting into game game design for sound, game audio, I got to, you got to use like, it's super technical and it's super creative. So it like scratches like all the itches yeah. for me, which is what I, what I love about it. Like I, it's, it's not, 
Like there's all these limitations that you have to deal with, which I find super fun and challenging and like really interesting what you can do within, within that realm. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, and, and we do really interesting, like fun, different games. Uh, we really get to try lots of stuff. There's lots of experimentation that always goes on. It's, um, it's really great that way. Okay. So let's ease a little bit. We've <laughs> talked about you experiencing like as an employee of the industry, but now yeah. you're also like a major player in the industry. <laughs> Um, kind of, kind of, well, I kind guess of so. are, because you had, you talked at GDC, didn't you? Uh, I talked at this GDC. That was the third time I spoke at GDC. Cause GDC actually. for, and I should probably be explaining this for the, like the two people, my, my parents and maybe my dog who will end up listening to this. Yep. Um, it's like the, the game developers conference and that's one of the, uh, the biggest, uh, industry uh kind of conferences for game developers that there is yep. and that's a that's a big thing to give a panel at so i to give three of those that's pretty cool yeah i did i did a, a solo talk and then uh i did a talk with kevin regami from power up we both did a talk together about reels and then this year uh i was on a it was a series of micro talks um, it was a panel that got turned into a series of micro talks, and I think there were six of us, and we all did little seven-minute talks about uh, composers who want to be sound designers. Um, yeah, I, it's I've I've done a lot bunch of talks. Uh, I really enjoy um, talking. I I enjoy sharing information. Um, you know, like I I do my own podcast with uh, Gordon from A Shell in the Pit. Um, we've been on a bit of a hiatus because Gord had a kid and I got sick and stuff. So, uh, but we've been doing that for five years, um, almost every month. So like, I, I like talking, I like sharing information. Um, so it's an enjoyable thing for me. It certainly wasn't when I started out. Um, it takes a lot to, to get up in front of a crowd and claim to know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I find, I find it enjoyable. Um, and I do a bunch of other stuff, uh, I guess that you would say why I'm a player within the industry, so to speak. It's still, I, I, I'm super self-deprecating, so I don't ever think, you know, that highly of all the stuff I do, but you know, you're right. I do a bunch of stuff. I, I speak at conferences. Uh, I organize, uh, free talks around GDC every year. I have a podcast that's, you know, incredibly well known in the industry. Uh, I help organize, um, a, a twice a year meetup in in Bellingham in the Pacific Northwest for Ooh. audio talks. Um, I've previously helped out with other meetups and stuff. I've talked to other things. So like I um, I do a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, and it it obviously keeps me visible. Of course. Where's Where's Bellingham? Is that in Canada? Bellingham is in Washington, and Washington. it is halfway between Vancouver and Seattle. So. Um, we do a thing twice a year called Audio Bash uh, that's kind of a meetup of the Vancouver and Seattle game audio scenes, and we get together and have um, we have talks for half a day. I That sounds really interesting. I'd really want to go to that maybe one day when I make my way to the, to the West <laughs> yeah, Coast. Yeah, it's great. We're, incredi- we're incredibly lucky. Like, we've got quite an awesome uh, audio scene here in Vancouver. There's a lot of really cool studios and a lot of great independent sound people uh, working away and Seattle's got a super vibrant and awesome games and, and game audio scene. Um, and they get together all the time and it's really cool to like get both of those kind of groups together, you know, every mm-hmm. once in a while and like share ideas and, and camaraderie. And it's one of the great things about, um, game audio, I think compared to other areas of game development. Um, I think we're, we are a pretty, close knit community and we are very open and sharing and and hopefully people feel that we're welcoming um and so we get together not not just in the Pacific Northwest but I I see all the time game audio gets together I think more than any other game development area mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. pretty unique and cool that we've got this community like this yeah Another thing that I found interesting um, that you mentioned, and I just want to go back because you just, you just kind of went over it, and I really need to come back to it, is that yeah. you said one of the talks you gave was yeah. um, 
about teaching composers how to do sound design. And I thought that was really cool because I've had to work on like some small like school projects or stuff like that where there was an obvious divide of, you know, uh, composers who couldn't work with the sound designers or sound designers who couldn't work with the composers because they didn't know how to do each other's things. And I think that's a really useful skill for all audio people to be able to know how to do both realms of sound. So I don't know. I just think that's a really cool aspect (laughs) of that talk too. So I mean, that spreads out out into to the to rest of audio, the rest of game development to yeah. be honest like the more you know about the other areas of game development the better off you're going to be like if you're an audio if you're a composer or a sound designer or whatever if you can pick up some coding some art some anything the more you like more than likely you the the audio person is going to be the one in the game team going and communicating with the rest of all the areas of the team, not the other way around. It's, it's rare that like they come to you. It's more like you reaching out to them. So if you can talk their language and understand how they're doing and communicate effectively with them, the better off you're going to be, you know, it's, it's none of, none of, games is made in a vacuum like you know the programmers aren't in their entire silo that they have like no opinion or know how to do anything like the more you know how everybody does their stuff the better it's you're gonna be because it's a team experience yeah of course and and that's the same for for sound design and and composing right like if you know i think almost all the best sound designers I know come from a music background. Like I couldn't compose my way out of a paper bag at this point, (laughs) but I, I had formal music training. I, you know, I've got a background in understanding and how I used to be able to read music and everything. So like I've, I can, I can talk to a composer and have an understanding of what they're talking about. And that's, that's helpful. So then taking that point, speaking of, just just a little segue right there. <laughs> yep. Speaking of um uh software and stuff like that, what are the things that you've needed to get to where you are here as a sound designer? What did you need originally? What do you need now? Um what is kind of the industry standard of That's a that's a... <laughs> I I have become more <sighs> not quite jaded but hesitant these days of offering advice in that area because one things change so quickly okay you know by the time somebody's listening to we could be on to something else that is like i had never heard of that's now the thing to learn At the end of the day you need you need a daw you need, a, you need some sort of digital audio workstation whatever like there's no standard anymore it's not like okay. film where everybody uses pro tools like you know, you can use whatever. At the end of the day, it's it's we're not transferring sessions around the same way that film does. So you can use whatever DAW. It's just like you need to produce assets that go into a game engine or a middleware, audio middleware or whatever. So it doesn't matter which one you use. You, you know, you use what you have and is com- you're comfortable using. Um, some are going to work better for some things but also the way you work might just work better for some than the other so you need a DAW you need a way to listen back to sounds you need probably a microphone to record things you need a bunch of sample libraries you know just the the tools are pretty basic like as what comes in a DAW is you know you can do just fine with that I'm a like a plug-in hoarder so (laughs) like don't ever listen to me when I'm like I've got over 500 plugins and god knows i don't use them all right so you know i still use the same 10 but if you took those if i had to use just the stock plugins uh in whatever DAW i was using i'd probably get by just fine you know it's a lot of these things are cool shiny toys and they're fun and they're interesting uh but at the end of the day it's it's still a lot of the same stuff that happens that you know we can get away with not the shiny fancy tools as well okay uh i guess i guess a better way to phrase it would have been what have you used do do you have you ever needed to use like an f mod or a wys or like what's your favorite dar something like that um so i i think there's sort of two two separations for me there okay. there's like creating sound effects and i'm a pro tools person but i would never recommend pro tools at this point 
to <laughs> for people to use um, because I I di- very much dislike their pricing scheme and it's really expensive and there's no reason to start down that path if you don't have to there's there's other ones that you can use um so try there's trials of everything try stuff out find a doll you like whatever use whatever you like um uh you know i i like use pro tools because i've been using it so long not because i actually think it's better than anything else it's like inertia causes me (laughs) to keep using it right it's just like what i know um as far as implementation, like you should know middleware. Uh, you should learn middleware at some point. You will use middleware or you will use proprietary stuff. It really depends on the studio you work with. Uh, and a lot of times it will be completely out of your control as the sound person what tool you're going to use on a game. Huh. So you can come in and it it might be FMOD, it might be Wise, it might be some proprietary thing, it might be Unreal, it might be stock Unity. You you don't know and like I'm I'm not the end voice that gets to dictate what we use in that regard on any game. There's a bunch of reasons to use different ones. Um so it may be completely out of your control. So, you know, the if you know one, the skills are very transferable. It's like once you know the concepts of it, you can pick the other one up. The other one's, you know, pretty easily. So, you know, learn one and hope that that's the one you're going to use. But if not, don't worry about learning the next one. Um, studios, like, if you're going to go into some sort of large AAA, you're probably going to work with proprietary tools that you have absolutely no way of learning beforehand. Okay. You know, like there's no way to touch that tool that's one of the great things right now is is the the commercial middlewares you can download and try out before you ever use them in a um a professional capacity which is awesome you know that didn't used to exist that way so you know take that obviously take that chance and learn what you can of the middlewares and the game engines and you know you can Mm -hmm. download unity and play with it like do that you know all that stuff is great to learn and you you probably will need to learn it at some point yeah. um if you're gonna have a you know an actual long career doing games that makes sense yeah it would make sense that studios would want to use their own software for especially big studios for yeah. their own games so you never you, you just kind of don't know what you're gonna come across so you know learn learn the, the 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 key thing is learning the concepts of all of it behind it so that it's you know it's like you you know how to use a daw you know how to record sounds and manipulate them at the end of the day you can pick up another daw and you know mm-hmm. once you learn your hotkeys and stuff get up to speed and do it all over again it doesn't it doesn't really matter uh, it's the same for all the 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 game engines and the middleware it's like you got to learn the concepts behind it all that's the most important thing I got you. <coughs> Oof. So now we'll we'll talk about like now that you've been in the industry for yep. this length of time that you have been. God knows how long. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to. Sixteen? Like I think it's I think oh. it's sixteen years. No. Um, sixteen years. It's crazy. That's a, that's a that's a good thing. That's a, you've had a lot of experience. You're wise. <laughs> Um, okay, what's what's something that you feel you've learned after being in the industry the whole time and of that thing you've learned, what of those things you've learned, what is a piece of advice that you would give to a new person who wants to join the game industry? The communication and soft skills are probably even more important than any of your like hard sound design or implementation or coding skills or any of that. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a team that makes a game. We're not okay. these solo, like, visionary artists making something. Maybe you are. But that, in that case, like, more power to you. And that's awesome. Go make your game in its entirety. But, like, more than likely, that's not what's going to happen as a, as a professional. You're going to work in a team. And a lot of that, what comes with that is communicating like your vision of things to people and making compromises and doing all of that in an elegant fashion that, you know, you all get along and, you know, make an awesome, cool thing at the end. Um, and don't, you know, like hate each other. Uh, 
I remember the first time I went to GDC, um, there was a thing on like how to break into the industry. And one of the guys who was doing the talk, his story was, you know, got a job. And the guy, he was like, why did you hire me? And his boss was like, well, uh, I was going to work with you a whole bunch and you weren't an asshole. So the rest <laughs> I could teach you. But if you're a jerk, I don't want to work with you. You know, like, so there's that thing of you, you kind of like got to get along with people and know how to communicate, you know, when, when, you know, you want to make a sound and you need it to get it hooked up by a programmer, you know, you got to learn, you got to know how to talk to that programmer to get, to get what you need and realize like how to fit into all the other stuff that they're also doing for the game and right. how to talk to an artist and get them to revise something so that you can make a sound that will work better for it, you know, and learn how to talk to them of, of you know, not being like, you need to do this for sound, but like how to be like, hey, wouldn't it be really cool? I really love the art you did. And I think if we just tweak this, I can make a really cool sound and it'll make it really, you know, come to life. Like, you know, all of that kind of stuff and how to convince a producer to give you time to go do a recording trip to, you know, and how that's going to add to stuff. Like all of that communication stuff is huge. Um, and more than likely, you're probably going to end up being a freelancer um, if we're honest about the industry these days so being able to communicate with clients and can convince them to hire you for their game and trust you with the vision of it like that's soft skill stuff like that's there's there's business and selling yourself stuff that is way more important than you might think it is you know when i was when i when i left ea and went out freelance i was horrible at selling myself i was a bad freelancer you know advice to myself would be like get better at that stuff that for sure that sounds i mean not that sounds that is that is very important that would yep. definitely be i guess moving on from there what would what would be something you would tell yourself if you would go back and well i guess you already said it you would, <laughs> you would, you would do that you you got me at my own game right there yeah and I mean, I would also, I would go back and tell myself that this is going to be a lot harder than you think it is. Um, of course, yeah. And especially to, to people like, I don't want to be a downer about stuff, but trying to break into the industry today, it's tough. The The bar is really high. There's a, like, we, we have this incredibly awesome, cool job. Like, I, I certainly will never undersell how awesome I think doing Sound for Games is. Like, it's the best. But there's a lot of people that want to do that job because oh, it's yeah. the best, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so there's sure. there's a lot of competition there, and and right now there is a like there is not a lot of stability within our industry. Um, and the if you're gonna make a go of it, the more you can set yourself up and protect yourself from that, the better off you'll be. And that's incredibly hard, you know. Oh, I would imagine, yeah. So I would be like, tell myself, you gotta, you got to prepare for some hard times. Be ready for it. Because I think there were certainly times that I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But you made it now, and you're, yeah. you're here. You're, you're big now. You're big time. I'm one of the lucky ones. Like, this is something I, I think about a lot whenever we, we talk about um, people who have been around a while. Like, you know, there's... I'm I'm not the only one. I'm not the one who's been around the longest. There's people that have been doing this longer than me and you know, people for me still to look up to as my my seniors in in game audio, but we we never this there's a survivor bias. We never hear from the people that didn't make it this far. Hmm. You know, like I I I don't know any way of figuring out how many people have left before 16 years for various reasons right. you know there's a there's a lot of really talented people that have probably been left by the wayside who've left the industry who have burnt out who you know for various reasons completely that have nothing to do with their skills you know have have gone on to other things and we don't really know like how many that is to really gauge of like how hard this is like yeah and that's a sh that's a shame. I feel like I don't know. I feel like if there was room for those people, there would be a lot more creativity and yeah. a lot more fun stuff in the industry. But it's just kind of I don't know what the word for it would be like compact or condensed or word. Yeah. <laughs> There's a word that's supposed to go there, and I can't <laughs> find it. Yeah. But 
A lot of people. The word for there's a lot of people there right now. Yeah. And you know, crowded. Yeah, it is. And schools are churning out people. So like, you know, if you want to make a go, you really have to figure out a way to stand up, stand above the crowd. Yeah. You know, that's tough. I, I do not envy people trying to break in these days. You know, <laughs> it's possible. I. Like, it's it's possible. It's not impossible. Like, people do it. Like, there's, I still see people who are getting their first jobs in game audio, and they're sticking around, and they're, you know, they're they're doing it, and they're talented, and they're great. But, yeah, it's, you got to really, the bar's really been raised, I think. And, and, and year over year, it keeps getting higher. Like, how do you stick out? Like, they're... The stuff that you used to do to stick out is what, like, everybody does now. So, it's like, what what do you do to stick out from that? But, you know, we we all keep getting better at this, and the, the industry keeps improving technologically and stuff. So, there is more stuff to do. There is more right. interesting ways to, to make yourself stand out from the crowd. Like, we're, n- we're not standing still as an industry. Like, the... You know, the bar to get in keeps raising, but the the bar of what we're doing keeps going up as well. Okay, yeah. You know, like I am a, fantastically a better sound designer now than I was 16 years ago, and I'm doing stuff now that I never would have thought of doing when I started out, or even you know, seven years ago. Like, you know, we we all keep learning stuff, and there's different, new and better ways to do things, and more interesting ways to do stuff. So, you know. That's another cool thing about about what yeah. we do is it's it's still constantly changing, so. And that's good. I think I think that's a good place to end that conversation before <laughs> I before I have a panic attack about my future. <laughs> um, well, um, so we're nearing the end. Uh, we've moved past the all 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 our industry talk, all our uh, putting you on the spot talk. We can. We're just having fun now. Um, right. right now, you can just talk about uh, if you have anything uh, anything coming up with your work with Clay, or I know a lot of that is sometimes under wraps, so you can you can talk about what kind of you do on the side. You can talk about your podcast. Now, you mentioned that earlier. You can kind of humble yeah. brag a little bit here if you want. <laughs> um at Clay, we've got a lot of really great projects going on. Uh, I'm I'm on a project called Griftlands right now. Um, n- not going to announce anything about that, yeah, but that's yeah. a project that's got <laughs> going on. Uh, Don't Starve, Don't Starve Together still keeps going. Um, uh, another sound designer is on, on that, Danny, who's doing an awesome job. Uh, uh, Jamie Bell is doing Oxygen Not Included, which is he's killing it on that. That game sounds so good. Um, he's just done amazing stuff on the sound on on that, um, so that's coming in. That's in early access right now, or I don't I don't know. By the time you listen to it, it might be out. Um, uh, Giacomo, our other sound designer, is working on a game called Hot Lava, which is a th- our first three D game, which is pretty cool, and he's he's doing amazing stuff. All like the the other sound designers at Clay are just so awesome that you know it it. It's great because, like, they're super awesome and it's a great community and everyone's, like, always open and sharing. And But, like, it makes you keep stepping yourself up because, you know, you see this awesome thing that they did on that game. And you're like, man, that was great. I need to, like, do something like that. And you, you, it's really awesome. Like, we, get, we all inspire each other, I think, all the time. At least I get inspired by what everybody else is doing, so... I'm sure they're inspired by you yep. too. So it's it's cool. It's a really I, I I really love all the sound designers um that I get to work with. Uh and then as you said, I've got a podcast as well um called Beards Cats and Indie Game Audio. Uh we've been going for about 5 years, a little over 5 years wow. now. Wow. It's me and uh, Gordon McGladry from A Shell in the Pit Audio. Um we just found that we were really comfortable, had a good time hanging out and chatting so we turned it into a podcast um we get a lot of like really awesome guests on um and it's just casual conversations that we have uh pretty low-key um yeah it's i don't know it's pretty awesome we get good and listenerships are, are and it's still like, going are you on like itunes and stuff like that yeah it's in all the places it's in nice. itunes it's in google it's in spotify like Search for Beards Cast in any game audio, and you'll find it. We're actually Beard. recording a new episode tomorrow. Oh, okay. I'll go for it right after we wrap. <laughs> um, uh, 
Uh, I make weird music on the side. Um, totally not a game audio thing at all, but like, go for it. Um, I I like to s- stretch out and like I could never compose for a game. Like I I can I can take feedback on sound design till the cows come home, <laughs> but as soon as you tell me to change something in a piece of music, I'm just like I don't know. What you, I don't know. I, the, that it's done. You know. But can you change it? No, it's it's just done. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the same, I use the same handle for everything everywhere. I'm Matt Esque, M-A-T-T-E-S-Q-U-E. Um, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me any, anywhere you see that name. It's probably me. So, uh, that's what I make music under. I make just like, I, I try to make other stuff and it all ends up being like dark ambient, gross stuff. Um, but it's just, it's fun. Like I have a bunch of synths and a bunch of guitar pedals and I love I still just love messing around with sound, you know, so coming home and, and making some music is, is, is fun a lot of the time. And it's also, like, it's something we need to be aware of as as sound designers and people who work within sound. Like, more often than not, we do this because we have a serious passion for it. Yeah. And so when when your passion is all about sound and you do that for a full-time job and then you come home and work on more sound projects it's like it's real easy to burn out even for if sure. you're like um lucky enough like I am to work at a studio that doesn't do any sort of crunch um you can you can end up crunching yourself by just continually working on the same stuff like if you if you work on games at a studio eight hours a day and you go home and you're like, right, I'm going to fire up my computer and work on my music project or my sound library or whatever. Like if you keep working on sound all the time, you're not really giving yourself a break. Mm -hmm. And, And I think downtime is incredibly important. Like I've certainly reached burnout at times. I got, um, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, I got really sick and it, it, my energy levels just were gone and it really, hit home like how much stuff I was doing and how easy it was to burn out doing all that uh so I think as much as anyone who's listening to this loves game audio and wants to do it find some other hobbies as well <laughs> take a take a break from the computer and go and do something else like, you know pick up like painting or photography or go on hikes whatever like do something else as well it's really great and it will inform your your audio stuff as well like you will always things will influence each other and you'll get ideas from things um i really like even when i'm doing music stuff like i've got i'm i'm lucky enough to own an op1 and have a couple of like i have a four track cassette four track and stuff and being able to work on music that's not sitting in front of a computer is a really nice break you know Mm -hmm. like finding different ways to do stuff so that you're not always sitting in front of a DAW, sitting in front of a computer and do stuff is, is really awesome way to approach things of just like tackling. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So that's some of the extra stuff I do, (laughs) I guess. (laughs) No, it's good. It's good. I, I already, um, as soon as you mentioned your handle, I found you on like Twitch and Twitter, and I'm so ready. Here we go. Um, See, so so like I'm on I'm on Twitch. Obviously, like you know, important to sign up for all the services you can. Just even if you don't use them, to like get your name so that somebody else doesn't have it. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I like I'll watch some Twitch stuff, and I like, but I don't I don't stream at all. And I keep thinking about like, oh, I could I could do that. That would be fun. That would be interesting. But I always stop myself because I'm like, that's another like big time sink of a thing to do. And you already do all this other stuff. Don't do that as well. And I'm like, right, okay. You know, it's cool and it's awesome. And a lot of people do really cool Twitch stream stuff. But, you know, you got you got to draw the line somewhere <laughs> about how many different activities you do. So I'm like, yep, I, I haven't fully gone down that path yet because... It's a big, it's a big load. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so last thing. Yeah. It's my my favorite thing to ask everyone. Their favorite, <laughs> their least favorite thing to hear. Uh oh. Um, just because it's so general. What <laughs> is one of your 
favorite or most inspiring game slash movie slash piece of art slash something slash media oh uh (laughs) yeah that's that's super wide open um okay music uh i'm incredibly inspired by a music festival in iceland that i go to almost every year um the music scene there like fills me with joy uh to a, a to a level that is like i have not found um i love a lot of music but when i go to that music festival i am i come away like with my soul filled um and like i think the power of music is incredibly powerful <laughs> for lack of a better sentence for sure for sure um so that's that's something like outside of games that i like it it's it's not like it inspires me to to what to do as a sound designer but it but, but it, it just fills insp- my yeah, soul it fills and and makes me want to then go out and do creative things as well you know so like that's that's something that, that does um does stuff for me uh i think the last couple of games um i liked are actually all by the same um sound designer when it comes to favorite sound in games um Eduardo Ortiz Frere, uh, he did What Remains of Edith Finch and Everything, which in the last couple of years are two, still two of my favorite sounding games um, around. They don't, have, they don't have to be your favorite sounding games either. They can just oh, be but like I, like, I love those games. games. I love those games, but I love the way they sound as well. Like, okay. like part of why I love those games is because the sound pulls you in so well. Um, like there's this cool thing in everything where you can just let the game run by itself and do like it plays itself. Um, and you find these really cool audio segments that will auto, they, if you're set it up, will auto play and you can just, like it's, I don't even watch the game sometimes. You just let it run and listen to the music and the sounds of the game and these, these clips from this philosopher talking. It's just awesome to, to listen to. Um, and Edith Finch was like, just a super powerful game to me. I loved, I loved playing it. And like the first time I finished it, I didn't play anything for a week. Cause I just wanted to sit on how that game made me feel and not like interrupt it with anything else. Um, I highly recommend okay. checking, checking I'll, that out. That'll be my next one. I've been looking for something. Yeah. It's great. To play. Um, and for better or worse, I play the crap out of destiny. Uh, I play a lot, a lot of that game. Uh, it's not the best game, but it's the <laughs> one I play all the time. If you recommend it, then uh, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it's you got to be into like you know space wizards and loot grind. Like it's a certain kind of. It's not the game for everybody, that's for sure. But um, I'm into space I, wizards and loot, but then you yeah. lose me at grind. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a grind to it, that's for sure. But I really enjoy it. I have a lot of fun playing it. Um, and two sounds great. It's a super okay. awesome sounding game. Uh, so one of the again, it's weird. Like one of the things I like doing in that game is y- you can find these moments where there is no music, there's no combat, and just like hanging out in these areas. Like the ambiences and the world building is just so good that you just want to like soak in it. You know, it's it's almost like I wish I could explore all these worlds without any combat going on. Like we mm-hmm. just turn off like all the enemy AI and just let me like walk around for a while. It'd be like great. Well, I got a lot to think about. I got a lot to <laughs> a lot of new games to play. Um I got nothing else left to say. I don't know if you have any final words that you'd like to impart on our single digit audience. <laughs> Hey, it's only single digit for now. <laughs> Very Our podcast started Thank out you. in single digits, and look at it now. <laughs> I, I, ha- I haven't seen it yet. I will check it out, though. <laughs> um, I don't know final words. Like, this is, you don't have to say anything. This I just is didn't like, know if you wanted to say anything. This is I... uh, <laughs> Sorry, a job that is, like, this. doing game audio is, like, the most satisfying thing that I've I've ever done. And I think it's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, It is not without its problems and its strife and struggles. Um, But if, if you can make a go of it, like it's, it's a pretty awesome, rewarding thing to do. 
that's about it, I guess. Okay. Everyone, did you hear that? It's very rewarding and it's very awesome. Um, I I actually really liked that too. I'm very excited. Um, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for tuning in. And I will catch you all next. Well, first of all, thank you for coming in today, Matthew. Yeah, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure. It's been, it's been very fun listening to you. You've been a great. You've been very fun to talk to. Um, and... Thank you all for listening, and I'll catch you all next time on Jarred the Dinosaur. Bye-bye.